Welcome back to another episode of GW Recap with yours truly, Carter Dudley Jr. Uh, GW Mans, you know, they're starting to build some momentum. Right on time, this uh, conference play reaches its midpoint. Uh, the Colonials, led by junior guard James Bishop, who scored a game high 27 points. And sophomore guard Joe Bamasil, who added 24 points, defeated LaSalle 89-87. Uh, it's their fourth win in the last six games. Um, like I said, uh, GW starting to figure some things out and starting to, and starting to build some momentum, starting to come together. And at the right time, they're starting to surge. And then this is what every team wants to do when conference will come. They want to be playing their bat, best basketball as the season progresses, not at the beginning, then they tail off. You know, as any college coach, that they would prefer that. Um, they reached the 500 mark in conference play now at 4-4. Four uh, LaSalle sophomore point guard Jamil Brick has finished with the team high of 20 points to lead the Explorers. Uh, just here are some takeaways from the game. Uh, GW's guard trio uh, of James Bishop, uh, Joe Bamasil, uh, Brand, uh, Brand Freeman, uh, they, they continue their all-around impact, man. Um, that that, that three-guard lineup is giving teams hell right now. They've pretty much been doing it throughout the season, even though like maybe one guard game to game may be kind of off, but now all three are playing well and doing it in their own unique respective ways. And uh, teams are having trouble figuring it out. You know, um, starting with James Bishop, obviously, like I said, he finished with the game high 27 points. Uh, the thing I, the thing that stood out to last night was that he, he handled LaSalle's ball pressure very well. Uh, he didn't turn the ball over once. Uh, he shot the ball efficiently. Uh, you know, he shot 7 of 14 from the field, 2 of 5 from deep, and 11 of 14 from the line, which was huge because GW had a close game late. You know what I mean? Uh, the LaSalle's a tough team. I get to them late in, in a little bit. They didn't go away. But, you know, Bishop handled the press well. He got fouled. He went to the line, and he knocked down uh, his fair share of clutch free throws to make sure GW uh, held on. Um you know he's been a, he's been on the tear of late. I'm talking about James Bishop. Uh, he's averaging 27.3 points over his last three games. Uh, when he's on, you know he he just opens things up for everybody else on the floor. Uh, There's a reason why coming into the season I kind of call him the you know the eight the Atlantic Ten's James Harden because when he's on and facilitating and he's in the shots efficiently, uh, you, there's nothing you can really do to stop him. And uh, he he draws so much attention from opposing defenses and opposing teams that it makes it a lot easier for other guys to find get freedom to find room to do what they do execute score make the pass make the play or whatever that needs to be done and um you know it, it's right on time because they need him you know to, to kind of get going he got off to a slow start this season but he's looking like james bishop the james bishop we saw last season um moving on uh brian freeman you know freshman sensation uh you know you set the table well you know, posted a team high seven assists while scoring 12 points and added two steals uh, with only one turnover, respectively. Uh, you know, he's playing with the poise and understanding of an upperclassman. Um, he's not your average freshman, man. You know, I keep saying this. He came in with the expectations that when he get in the game, just don't make any mistakes offensively, but defensively calls hell. He's doing that defensively, and he's causing hell offensively, man. And, uh, the, you know, I, it, it's just – He's just been a bright spot all season. Even when GW was struggling mightily, you know, early in the season, he was still a bright spot. And uh, he's figuring out the college game. And now that he's figuring it out, he can he can start to impose his will, which is what he's doing. And, you know, Bama Seal, man, you know, I've been high on him all season, man. Um, he was just unstoppable all game. You know, he came within one three-pointer of tying the school record for May threes in the game, which is currently held by two former Colonials, uh, Kwame Evans and Greg Colucci. Uh, Bamasu shot 7 to 10 from deep. Uh, he was also highly active defensively. You know, he swarmed LaSalle bigs with dig downs, coming from weak side blind spots to try to strip him or, you know, try to get his arms up to, to block any potential, you know, cross court passes to open shooters or whatnot. And then when they did make the passes cross court or to the open man, he recovered, he got out there, he contested, and, you know, he kept, he stayed between this man and, and, the, and the basket. Fundamental defense, man. He uh, he did, he got it done on both ends. Um, you know, he finished with four steals, and that's not even including that many deflections or potential 
force turnovers that he caused just by being active, man. Um, you know, he, he, you know, I know Bishop's been on the tear, but he's equally been on the tear. He's, he's probably been one of the more consistent colonials, and he, you know, throughout the season, man. So, you know, big props to him, man. He had a huge game, man, huge game. And, uh, you know, he, he's taking the A-10 by storm. But, it, you know, not to be ignored, you know, you got to look at, you got to look at Hunter Dean and Kwanzaa Samuels, man. They do the dirty work, uh, but they play their roles well. And they, they've been key in GW's recent surge. You know, if you've been following GW Basso throughout the season, it was a point in time where Kwanzaa was, wasn't really even getting in the game, and Dean would play sparingly. But, you know, obviously, uh, Jamie Christian liked what he'd been seeing in practice, so he gave him a chance. He gave him a shot, you know, kind of trying to mix things up to try to provide a spark. He put them in the starting lineup, and it's been <laughs> full steam ahead. You know, like, uh, like I said, GW is gaining momentum. And, uh, you know, they do, like I said, they do the dirty work inside, and they did a great job of containing LaSalle's leading scorer, you know, 6'10", Clifton Moore, and their beast inside, 6'9", 250-pound, Mamadou Ducor. Uh, he's a grown man. Yeah, he, he's a grown man. Uh, Dean, <laughs> Dean and Kwanzi, but they were up to the challenge, man. They did the best they could. They, they didn't. They weren't shy. They weren't scared. They stood there. They took the contact, you know, kept their arms up, played fundamentally sound defense. They swarmed them. And uh, it kept the core at bay. And same thing with Moore. Moore got going late in the game. You know, it was just, you know, you know, easy dunks and stuff like that. When you know, GW was you know, pretty much trying to scramble to keep uh, LaSalle from, you know, just just scramble, just not trying to allow LaSalle to get any open three pointers or whatnot. And with meanwhile, not trying to foul when they had the lead late in the game. So he got some wide open dunks. But for the most part, they kept him contained. You know, and which was big. Um, in this win, you know, Dean finished with 13.6 rebounds and five blocks while Samuels added eight points and four rebounds. Like I said, uh, production that is essential for GW to keep on winning, but it may not be the type of production that most fans pay attention to because they sit in the gravitate towards who scored the most points. But I'm looking more at the rebounding and the blocks and stuff. If they can continue to and the defense that obviously don't show up in the box score outside steals and blocks, but I'm talking about the, the, the true defense where you're really getting stops. As long as they continue to provide that and with the production that they're getting from their guards or whatnot, um, you know, GW can build somewhere. They could be one of the most dangerous teams going in uh, the conference championship, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and that's just real. They're playing that well. Uh, but not to be ignored LaSalle, you know. You can't just ignore them. They, they played a great game as well. They could have easily won it. Uh, LaSalle has some dangerous young guards and Jamil Brickus, uh, freshman Khalil Brantley. You know, shout out to Brantley, the Jim Couch alum. For those of you that may not know, scout for the Jim Couch uh, National Training Showcase up in uh, New York, DMV scout. And, um, you know, I organized a lot of players to go up there to battle. And uh, Khalil Brantley put on the show, you know, in one fall, uh, you know, I think 2019 showcase at about 30 in the game. So I'm very familiar with what he does. Um, Josh Nickelberry, 6'4 guard. Um, versatile, does it all. And 6'8", Jack Clark, who uh, can float between either the three or the four and be equally effective. Um, he, he was <laughs> he was big. He was big for LaSalle, man. Um, starting with Brickus, man, he's special. You know, I've heard the hype from Pennsylvania. He went to Coatesville High School, uh, same school that uh, Rip Hamilton um, played at. We all know who Rip Hamilton, the NBA champion, all-star. Um, and I he left the school the all-time leading scorer, so that tells you how special he is. Uh, he can run a team. Uh, he's highly poised, and he can score from all three levels. You know, he's very dangerous. He's sharp, man. Just to be a sophomore, he's very dangerous. And uh, he, he's one of those guards that the national audience may not know about, but if you follow A-10 basketball, he's a problem. He's going to continue to be a problem. You know, he's definitely going to be an all-conference selection as long as he stay healthy. Uh, throughout his career, he's definitely gonna be the runner for that. It's, it's no question. Uh, he, you know, he, he even late in the game, uh, four point play, three pointer. You know, Bama Hill draped on on him, rose up, drew the foul, and knocked down the shot, knocked down the free throw. That's why I came down to Bishop having to make, you know, a couple free throws in the last few seconds to so GW can can hold on. 
because they don't quit. And that just tells you about the competitive nature, the IQ, and the skill level of Brickett's to even get that shot off on Bama, who's a freak athlete, who's much bigger. I believe Brickett's is about uh, 5'11", 6 feet. Uh, Bama Hill is 6'4", with a 7-foot wingspan, 40-plus inch vertical. I mean, he's a, he's athletically, he's, he's a superior. But Jameer got, got enough space and found a way. And that's what makes him so tough. He finds a way. Um, so you can keep an eye on him. He, he's dangerous. Uh, he finished with a team high 20 points and a game high eight assists and only turned the ball over twice and shot seven to 12 from the field and five and nine from deep. That, that, that tells you all you need to know about the type of uh, talent that he is. Uh, like I said, Khalil Brantley, when uh, GW looked like where they were about to pull away, I think they were up by as many as 13 in the second half. Uh, Brantley got going, um, and that's what I mean, you know, going all back to the gym couch day when he was in high school. When he gets aggressive and decides to put the ball on the hole, he, he's like the microwave. He can put he can put points on the board in bunches and bunches and, and quickly. It don't take much. Like he, he, And he pretty much erased the double-digit lead by himself. And he, he I know he finished – um, with 11 points on 4 or 7 shooting and 2 or 3 from deep. But most of those points came in the second half. And he had 4 assists and 4 rebounds. And he only turned the ball over twice. And keep in mind, this is a true freshman. So uh, that, that surge got LaSalle back in the game. Then the upperclassmen took it from there. And that's what you need, man. So he's going to be a problem uh, you know, as his career moves forward as well. Josh Nickelberry, I was, I was thoroughly impressed with his game, man. You know, 13 points. Five or eight shooting, uh, you know, two rebounds, you know, got after it defensively in, in spots. Uh, loss is cool at the end. That was a costly technical. Uh, James Bishop hit the hit the technical. Those those little details affects games. You know what I mean? He lost his cool over not getting a foul call. That's neither here nor there, man. You know, it's a learning experience, or whatever. But it came costly because it was late in the second half, and they they were mounting that comeback. And it's little plays like that that can. You know, deflate, they could deflate teams. It didn't deflate them, but it did halt their momentum some. And um, you could tell by looking at the coaching staff when it happened, how, how they just walked away, how frustrated they were because, you know, you didn't need it at the time to stay with it. And that's just about being poised and mentally tough. You know, you're on the road and certain things. You got to play through certain things. Um, but nonetheless, uh, he hit key shots when LaSalle needed shots made. You know, and right when it was like, IGW get to stop and come back down and just you know really put this game away. He hit a three, <laughs> you know what I mean, or or, or hit a hit mid range jumper or get free for a layup. You know, so, so he was always you know there to keep the keep the run going or to stop a GW's run. So uh, that was his impact tonight, man. He, he he's a talent, you know. Junior guard, uh, like I said, uh, Lasalle has 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 a deep. Um, a deep group of guards that know how to play and can play. They can do a lot of things, but one thing they all can do is put the ball in the basket. And last but not least, 6'8", Jack Clark, man. Uh, he stepped up big, man. 17 points and a, and a game high, 11 rebounds. He's a big reason why LaSalle rebounded uh, GW 46-26. Yes, you, you 46 rebounds and 26. He had 11 of them, four offensive, man. Uh, he did it all and with three steals. <laughs> And, and and three blocks, Mr. Do everything. Like I said, man, he's the most versatile player on their team. There's no argument. It just is what it is. Uh, he can get it done on the perimeter. He can go on the block and get it done. Play point forward style. Whatever they need to do, um, get done. He can he can do it. He's basically the utility man. You know what I'm saying? The Swiss Army knife guy, and he gives teams trouble. And he gave GW trouble, obviously. Uh, you know he didn't shoot the ball well. He was only five for eighteen. And uh, you can credit GW's defense for that, but with the closeouts, when once they dug down on the bigs and closed back out, you know the contest. Nonetheless, he still managed uh, to find ways to to put the ball in the basket, and, and, and you know at different points in the game, he shot five or six from the free throw line, which they needed to uh, get back in the game. So um, they have talent there, man. They're young. LaSalle's young. I know their record isn't the best right now, but they're young, um, and they're gonna grow together. So. I can see them being an issue uh, later on as these players, if these players stay together and continue to grow, they do you know, obviously hit the transfer portal. That's a, another, that's a whole nother conversation for another day. I'm not even going to get into that. But if they stay together, keep this nucleus together, yeah, the Salgan, you know, possibly be at the top of the A-10 a year or two. You know, that's just being real. 
But uh, next up for the Colonials, uh, the 8 and 12 Colonials now, they will host conference leading Davidson Saturday at 2 p.m. I'll be, be right back here with GW Recap to provide analysis. See you all then, and please be safe out here.